Hello and welcome to my March 2023 CEO memo. Wow, time is flying by. Uh, thankfully, in March, we had effectively five weeks, some extra days and no public holidays. In April, we will have uh, Good Friday, we'll have Easter Monday, Anzac Day, which I see as a double-edged sword. In one sense, it's great to have an extra day off. On the other side, it is taking away from resourcing. And if you're in retail, you've had to experience an increase in minimum wage. And uh, obviously, that has a flow on effect with day and loo, time and a half, all of those sorts of things. So yes, great to have a day off, but equally gets in the way of doing business, doesn't it? Nonetheless, uh, coming into winter, we can start to assess how that first quarter has gone and for us, uh, particularly well. And that comes down to planning. I'm very much uh, a planner by nature and I have come to learn to trust the plans uh, that I'm making and to see it in the length uh, that it needs to be rather than expecting immediate results or, or worrying. And I think that's something that I often share with others um, is the push-pull of anxiety. Anxiety to me is living in the future. Uh, and so I suffer from that from time to time. My want to drive forward, my want to get things done tends to tie me up in knots. Monday morning, driving to work, stress, 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 worried about the week ahead, worried about the month ahead, worried about money. By the end of Monday afternoon, a lot of that is gone. And it used to be a lot worse. These days, I've got a better handle on the way that I deal with um, that that living in the future and trust the plans that I have put in place. I'm very fortunate that I have a, a stellar cast of supporting members, the management team. Our mid-management team have really strengthened uh, this year, and I'm very proud about what the, the work that they're doing and then our frontline staff. So everyone's working together. But the plan that we had this year was to get to a particular number of clients, and we're pretty much there. That means that we hold at this level, we double down, we give you more, we train our staff to be uh, at the front line of what is working in 2023 and what is the direction that we're going to be going in. So from a lead generation perspective, very happy. From a company development perspective, I think we're doing very, very well in terms of the structure. And that is what I'm going to discuss today. And I'll probably discuss it in the months ahead. And that is how I have laid out Webwonks and how the different teams are run through key meetings during the week, what we call WIP meetings. And there are multiple ones, and I'll show you those in a moment. Before I do, I just wanted to touch on sort of the, the wider economic uh, sort of pulse that I get from clients. There has been some flux, weather related, no doubt, uh, in terms of um, a number of clients that tuned this month because of weather related issues. Uh, and then we've also seen uh, clients in the retail space who are seeing a contraction. We've picked up um, more than uh, we have churned, which is ultimately the aim of the game uh, and are very much in that pocket of where we're targeting. But what I'm hearing back from clients is that from trade-based businesses, they do have a, a longer lead time than they did have at the beginning of the year, which is great. Uh, retailers seeing, um, if not um, buoyancy, they're certainly not going backwards and that's key. And then the services sector, I think, is doing particularly well. Given that I am looking to move to America and the company is almost fully established uh, and ready to, to turn the key and start generating a uh, new business in Houston, uh, I do look at things like you know, the economic underpinning and the trade balance that we have is very much in deficit. It's the worst it's ever been. And so uh, we do need to be exporting more. And when things like uh, cyclones come through, that is going to have an impact upon us. And we're all seeing that uh, when we buy our fruit and veg uh, on the weekends or, or whenever we get shopping. So I think that there is energy and vitality happening in, in the economy um, across all of our clients. We are hearing difficulty, but we are hearing positivity. So it's almost as though we're in economic purgatory at the moment. Uh, very much hope to see that, that uh, go toward the positive as we get through the year. I'm just going to share my screen now, and I am going to show you uh, what will have been reported in the email that goes out um, the last two years of uh, trading. And we can see this is 40 of our top clients that generate leads uh, through e-commerce uh, values. 
and uh, what the return on ad spend is and the cost and the, the total conversion value. So if we look at uh, the month of March, we can see that the cost was 130000 and that generated $1.1 million of turnover through websites and a ROAS return on ad spend of 8.5. And if we look back at March, if we get March, where are we? Find March. Oh, so delicate. There we go. Uh, cost was uh, 118000 uh, but only generated 950000 so 150 less and had a ROAS of 8.02. And if we look at March of 21, a lower cost at 93000 but a far lower uh, value return at 734000 and a ROAS of 78 So that's good to see, and, and you can see that it's starting to build up. Certainly, I would envision 2023 being better than 2022. Again, what we have to look at is percentage increases, and I'll talk about that later in the year. Um, but what will be uh, what is at the background level at the moment is we are seeing an increase in ad auction costs and we are seeing more people come into the market. And so with those two things combined, it will mean that uh, you will be seeing less leads come in. You will be seeing less revenue come in and you will be seeing that you're not getting as many uh, clicks and the cost of your uh, daily budget is being used you know, quicker. So we're aware of that and that's a targeting uh, option, targeting, uh, uh, we need to spend attention uh, in the ad accounts, looking at the targeting options, removing uh, search terms, search keywords that are not relevant to you. And so that's account hygiene that we want to be looking at. We had a number of clients taper down their ad spend uh, because of the market impacts that they're seeing. One thing I'd like to point out is it's important to never turn off your ads. Reduce it by 85%, the budget, reduce it by 85% by all means, but try never to just turn off your ads. It will have an impact upon your ad account. If you turn it back on, even if you turn it on a week later, you will not get the same uh, leads and metrics that you did if you hadn't uh, turned it off, if you kept it at 15%, 10%, it still keeps the pipeline together. Now, why is that the case? I don't know. It is anecdotal, but I have seen it multiple times. And so the recommendation is if you have to shape your budgets, lower them, do not turn them off wholesale. Because if you do want to ramp it up later, it's a heck of a lot harder uh, when it doesn't do what it was doing. Uh, that's an extreme frustration. And we have had clients that have been in that situation in the past. Um, just a brief note on AI, uh, as I'm sure you're all well aware now from where we started at the beginning of the year, where AI was the matrix. Uh, now every product has AI infused in it. I'm actually going to include in my email a cartoon that I saw uh, yesterday, which I think uh, really just illustrates how to the extreme end people have now gotten where they are turning their brain off and going to chat GPT or using an AI tool and going, what's the answer? That's the fastest way to lose your job. It's the fastest way to be eradicated from any real purpose. Uh, we as governors of intellect need to use AI as a tool, not outsource our intellect. And for you and your teams, become the managerial class do not become subservient to the AI. Yes, it makes our life easier, but if you put every single thing you do uh, through AI and ask it questions on things you would have had to have otherwise thought about yourself, what what do, value are you bringing? It's probably more a question for our staff that we need to ask them. Um, if you're just outsourcing everything, I don't think you're bringing much. You can, of course, harness and meld together productivity and efficiencies that AI bring uh, with your own experiences. So that's definitely something to watch. Um, it'd be interesting to see how our internal uh, application of AI goes throughout the remainder of the year. US expansion, we bought the .com. I was offered webwonks.com 10 years ago for $50,000 US. I was able to buy it for $2,600 US. They offered it to me for $4,800, uh, but a, a friend of mine was able to steer me in the right direction. And so after 
13 years of webwonks. We now own webwonks.com. A new website will be released soon and will be attached to that domain. So that's actually really cool. Our trademarks in the US have been submitted. Uh, a friend of mine uh, at Chapman Trip, David Kodai, go see him for all of your IP needs. He uh, and I went to, uh, he studied chemistry and law at Vic Uni. Um, we flattered together and he was able to give me some uh, insights and help me get those done. So they're in process. We have a uh, Skype number. Uh, for local Houston, we have a virtual office, uh, we have our insurance sorted, uh, we're dealing with our accounting at the moment, we're dealing with our terms and conditions. Once the website's ready to go, we're pretty much turning on that key. So lots of things happened in March at the really pointy end of several years of uh, work. So starting to get exciting. And then from my side of things, you know, those palpitations, I have to generate the leads. And yeah, I've got a pretty good plan. Like I said, I'm good at planning, but you know, it doesn't always go the way you want it to. So um, we'll see how these memos go toward the end of the year, eh? Um, but I'm excited. The family is excited. And uh, when it's cold in, in Auckland and New Zealand, it will hopefully be warm in Houston. And one of the series, and I'll, I'll wrap up my um, CEO memo with talking about a series, is how do I run the company? Uh, and so I'll show you uh, the number one thing that we work with as a management council. But you'll notice as my bookmarks, uh, we use Diligent for our monthly board meetings and all of our documentation uh, gets put into Diligent and I share that with the board. Our secretary, uh, Al, collates that and we produce our minutes and then uh, the commercial director, the operations director, the sales director and myself all produce reports. Uh, the accountant produces reports and we can track cash flow and forecast. So we have a pretty good handle on what we're doing within the company uh, once a month. We have a traffic agenda that happens once a week on a Monday. That's mid-management, our commercial director and our two operations directors, one from New Zealand, one from Manila. And that facilitates all of your work going through our system. We have a commercial whip on a Wednesday. That is our insights traffic controller, our sales traffic controller, and uh, Steffi, our commercial director, talking about the need for uh, rollovers uh, or any quotes that are stuck, any resourcing issues we have, and uh, training that's required. Thursdays, we have our revenue whip. Thursdays is a big day for me. It's mostly when I have sort of eight to nine meetings, uh, all internal. The revenue whip is, are we on track? How many clients have we got? How many new clients have we got? Where are we at in terms of um, total revenue? Where are we at in terms of forecasts for next month against uh, the three revenue inputs? So new business, uh, projects, and then connected jobs, which are a one-off job. So we break it down to the three revenue sources, how we are matching against target. And since we implemented that meeting, it's only a half hour meeting every week, wow, we've hit target. Every month we've hit target since that eyes on five people being involved in that meeting. It used to be all on me. Um, and I would feel that anxiety that I was talking about. So democratizing it around senior members of staff helped a great deal. We have a resourcing meeting. That's uh, the traffic controllers, the operations director, uh, the for both Manila and for uh, New Zealand, and myself. And we talk about where are we at in terms of uh, resource requirement. Do we need to employ a new staff member in any given team? We work on a basis of uh, eighty-five to ninety-two and a half percent is in the green. Um, anything above 92 and a half is in the red. And so we need to maintain what well, actually it's green, orange, red, anything above 92 and a half, we're starting to strain our ability to deliver to clients. And so we have pretty clear understanding of where our months ahead are going to look. So we're employing people ahead of time. That's a really key meeting. We have the management council should be here. This is the one I'll briefly explain today. Um, and you'll see what goes on in that. Our management executive, which is our smaller group of uh, team members, it is um, the operations director in New Zealand, our technical director, Raja Sharma, um, our uh, commercial director and myself, and we talk more specifically about profitability, any staffing issues, any external issues that we may need to address that we don't want to take to a wider group, and we as an executive council are responsible to the board. Sales whip, 
Uh, look, that's pretty straightforward. The two that I haven't included here is the operations whip and the insights whip. Those are the team's whips. So the insights traffic controller, operations traffic controller, and sales traffic controller runs those meetings and has their teams uh, discuss what their agendas are, where they're needing to go. It's an opportunity for the back and forth of those staff to bring things to the attention of mid-management. Mid-management can obviously then bring it to senior management. I have a weekly development meeting uh, with our uh, developers, and that's where we work on our model. It's where we work on our US expansion. It's where we're working on the AI integration. And then we have a marketing whip. Marketing whip I'll talk about next month. I think it would be really important to be able to showcase to all of the clients about how we use digital, how we're using YouTube, uh, and this, is, this will be a YouTube video, obviously, and what kind of engagement we're getting off of that. Um, but for today, I just wanted to share with uh, you all how I run the company. So. All of those meetings feed into our management council. So on management council, we have uh, Raja as a traffic controller, uh, Sahib as our operations director for uh, New Zealand, uh, Grace, who is our operations director for the Philippines, uh, Steffi, who is our commercial director, uh, and then Nick, our sales director, and myself. So we have a, a company focus. Typically, that's going to be um, a mixture of revenue and uh, internal sort of training and resource. And so what are we looking at? And then we have subsets for the individual teams. What are we working on there? We have our, our sales director who then goes and adds current sales figures, lead generation numbers and relevant details. Now, what we've made this meeting really be about is this should be a pre-informed agenda and we're making decisions off the back of that. So all of those meetings feeding into this singular meeting allows us to make decisions having already observed what's going on throughout the week. Marketing, that's me, I'm the lead there, uh, and I add current metrics about the company marketing, changes in brand position, details, renew content, relevant changes about the company. The revenue meeting, uh, the lead is the commercial director, and we have a support, which is the technical director, and that's just talking about current metrics, about client numbers, potential churn, upcoming rollovers, and relevant impacts to revenue. Resourcing, led by the operations director and supported by the technical director, and that is to add current resourcing picture and discuss department issues, review internal training programs, and relevant impacts to resourcing. Traffic is uh, led by the operations director in the Philippines and supported by the technical director, and that's to discuss allocation issues, client issues, upcoming additions to master product templates, which are IP, and details relating to week-to-week -to -week delivery of workflows. Commercial, led by the commercial director, and the purpose of that is to discuss the current data health kit sales, upcoming rollover quotes, and connected quotes, plus potential client issues and staff issues. Uh, HR, that's all of us working to collaborate, and that's to discuss any staff issues, staff leave requests that require larger sign-off, most are dealt with at the traffic level, and staff equipment requests. And then we have any other business, to, and that's again all management uh, team members, and that's to address any outstanding issues. This meeting, quite critical, but it's, it's the hub, everything, all the other meetings being the spokes, and it has revolutionized the business. It allows me to run the business pretty much on a Thursday. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to see me in a meeting, um, that will be on probably a Monday or Tuesday only, and uh, those are the days that I've assigned to New Zealand. Uh, on a Wednesday, I deal with the US. On a Friday, I deal with innovation and, and mop up the rest of the week. So Thursdays is a time where I can make decisions and answer the key questions that are being asked of me by the management and by mid-management teams. So I thought a little bit of an insight as to how we run the company uh, and how we've evolved uh, might be useful. Next week or next month's uh, video might be more insightful because I'll talk specifically about our marketing uh, whip and what we're discussing for our own marketing. And that might have a direct bearing upon everyone that we work for because we're doing digital marketing for ourselves. We're doing digital marketing for you. Probably, you know, if we're doing it, you would want to look at it too. I don't know how long this video is, probably longer than I intended. So if you got through this far, thank you very much. Have a wonderful April. Uh, happy Easter. Uh, and I will see you next month. Go well.